Whilst I'm sure somewhere in the world summertime is blazing away, here British summertime, well, it hits a little bit different look, but it does mean that I can dig out the hardtail because wet weather and a hardtail go together like chalk and cheese, right? I think those two things go together well. So I thought we'll brush up on our hardtail skills. Okay, so our first top technique that we're gonna learn is a classic here at GMB, and it's the art of pumping. Yes, so using the trail to generate speed by moving your body weight and bike around. Now, pumping is done in lots of different scenarios, if you like. Pump tracks are obviously a great place to learn that because, as the clue suggests in the name, you actually use that technique to generate speed to get around a track. But what is pumping? Where can we use it? And how do we actually do it? When it comes to a hardtail, then it's literally the perfect tool for pumping. Now, pumping is using something like this, a big roller or maybe in a berm, and it's the art of essentially compressing your body and generating speed. And because you're doing that on a hardtail, when you compress and then push, you're not losing any of the force or speed that you do generate. It's the perfect tool, people. How do we pump then? Well, don't worry, people, there will be a slow-mo any minute now for you to follow. But essentially, if I'm on my bike, I'm coming up to the roller. As I hit the bottom of the roller and start to go up it, I've compressed with my arms and legs into the bike. Head up, always looking at the top, couple of bike lengths ahead. As I get to the top of the roller, I start to stand up on the bike. And then, this part's the crucial bit. As I come back down the other side of the roller, that's when I'm gonna start compressing into the bike again to push out as I get to the bottom. And it's this part here, which is gonna gain you the pace that you need to well, crush the next feature, of course. Here's that slow-mo. Now, when it comes to pumping in a turn, look for that middle spot because that is roughly where you want to get that compression sort of a uh, technique, if you like. So when you're squatting into the turn, it'll roughly be the middle where you'll be at your most compressed. You'll be looking at the exit, so you'll always be ahead, not looking down at your front wheel because that's when things go wrong. And that's when you'll start to pull up, stand up on the bike, pull out of the turn. And it means that you'll, one, bring the bike up vertically, and then obviously you can get on the gas and keep your eye on the next section coming. Okay, now we're gonna talk about wheelies, people. Now, wheelies on a hardtail are a little different to a full size, and the reason you'd wheelie, especially out on the trail, vary as well. So let's take a look at when and where you would do it. So let's go with the whens to begin with. Well, when would you pop a wheelie? Well, I think, first up, bizarre as it sounds, when you're going uphill, this is when a wheelie can actually be quite useful. And I'm not talking a big sort of wide out 12 o'clock boys one where you're dragging a hand behind you, because that ain't apart from looking steezy, ain't too useful. But when you're going uphill and it gets a little rough, this is when the wheelie can come into play, which we'll elaborate on in a little bit. So that was the when, it was the where, but now you kind of need to know how. Well, here's exactly how. Okay, I've got a bit of a basketball analogy for you now. Imagine you're dribbling a basketball, bouncing a basket with both hands. So as you push down, your body weight's gonna come back. And at that point, you're also gonna give it a hefty pedal stroke whilst you're leaning back. And what that's gonna do is you're gonna bounce, pull back, pedal at the same time, and that'll hopefully lift the front wheel. Practice makes perfect here though, mine guys. So persevere with it. Soft grass is a good thing to learn on. A slight incline as well, because it helps get the weight back and always cover the back brake. No one likes a Larry loop out. Hey, okay, couple of bonus tips for you here. 
Let's talk about saddle height. Now, when it comes to saddle height, having it slammed makes it harder to get on the pedals and get the power down. So having that saddle raised slightly, maybe not all the way, means that it helps you shift your weight backwards. Once you do get the hang of the wheelies and you are covering that back brake, you might notice that you'll start to wander left to right. Shifting your butt around from left to right on the saddle and getting those knees out a little bit helps you sort of counterbalance that and almost steer. Earlier on, we crushed it on how to wheelie, and we're gonna take that skill to the next level and use it to stop ourselves wheel spinning when it comes to climbing. Because there's nothing worse oh, than losing traction. Okay, so this is exactly where a great spot and a prime example is. We're coming up, it's a fairly steep hill, not the worst, but we've got kind of a step here, this route. So it's about a six inch step. Now, if you're just gonna ride into that in a hard tail, you're just gonna bang off it with the front wheel and then wheel spin with the back wheel. So it's where exactly you wheelie. So about here, off almost this little bump before is where you'll initiate the wheelie, pick the front wheel up over that, and what you'll then do is throw your weight ever so slightly forward and get the power down at the same time to then hop and get up over it. Word to the wise though, don't throw that body weight forwards too far and really crank on the pedals, because all that happens if you haven't got the speed to get up over this, you're just gonna wheel spin. When it comes to climbing, there is no worse feeling than climbing on a hardtail and constantly wheel spinning and slipping, which is where a full sus may sort of have a little bit of an edge, we say it, compressors and grips and so on and so forth, which a hardtail obviously can't do. So here is how to stop that back wheel slipping when you're going on a climb and, well, what better weather for it. The trick to not wheel spinning then is all in timing your unweighting and you're pedaling. So as you come up, you'll pop that little wheelie up over the route, and it's at this point you'll lunge your body weight forwards, but you need to time the pedal stroke so that it's just after you've got up the step. If you time that pedal stroke so it's there, you're just gonna wheel spin. Time it for just after, and then that's when you'll be able to get on the power and carry on. We're on approach, carrying us a good bit of speed. I'm gonna wheelie, I'm gonna wheel spin, spin. Oh. I see that I didn't quite carry enough momentum and lunge my body weight forward enough to get up and over the route, and I didn't make it. The great thing about riding a hardtail is that direct feedback from the ground, actually knowing what the tires and feeling what the tires are doing underneath you. One minute, you could be on lomas. The next minute, hard pack. The important skill here is to use sort of your knowledge and experience of different trails and trail centers to try and preempt and predict, if you like, what the tires, what the bike might do underneath you and hopefully avoid crashing. Because you're on a hardtail, that feedback, that sort of grip, that response is almost instant. So what you wanna try and do here is learn to make sure you're looking ahead far enough down the trail. Try and spot any potential sort of slip hazards or, or sketchy sections that might be coming up. That way you can preempt them like we talked about and either avoid, hop, unweight, or do whatever's necessary to sort of maintain traction, keep that grip going and keep yourself riding down the trail. In contrast to the previous points, trails often have areas or sections on them which will offer support and places that you can actually weight the bike. So in contrast to where we were unweighting before to get up a segment, on the way back down potentially, you'll be looking at these points where you can really load the bike into a section to help gain grip. Now, what you wanna be doing here is constantly looking ahead analyzing and checking out the trail for maybe areas that are clearer, carry speed, and you can really push into, because let's face it, you can't just keep unweighting the bike floating all the time forever. Mm -hmm. 
So on maybe rocky, rough, slippery tracks like today, try and keep your eyes peeled for maybe grippier patches of dirt, gap between sections that you can hook up on easier. I mean, look at the state of this section, which we're gonna hit in a minute. When I'm riding down something like this, I'm always looking really far ahead and I'm looking for maybe areas where I'm not gonna hit an off camber route because it's gonna be really slippery or where the water's actually pouring through like it is down the right hand side. So I'm gonna be looking to be coming through this nice little gap here. I'll hit that route fairly square on and it'll help me onto this patch of dirt here where there are no roots and carry my momentum around the side here rather than this washed out, blown away bit here. Think of all these little lines and patches of smoothness or control that you do get as, as islands of rest, if you like, in between the gnarliness. It just gives you that little bit of time to help set up for maybe the next scary bit or rough bit coming up. Oh, right, there we have it, people. Some great tips, tricks, skills and frills for you to learn on your hardtail. Hopefully, some that will help you maybe some more than others. Let me know if you wanna see any more hardtail skills stuff, any more hardtail thrashing. Maybe me and Blake should get together on our hardtails and go somewhere. Who knows? You know where to let us know in the comments down below. I am gonna get out of here because it is Les Miserables today and I need a cup of tea. So until next time, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you later.